There will be no more important bilateral relationship for Ireland in the EU after Brexit than the one that we enjoy with Germany. In Germany, you understand borders only too well, both their symbolism and their potential corrosive impact on communities on both sides. And you know that our effort to ensure no physical infrastructure or associated checks or controls emerge on this island is born of a determination never to return to the divisions of the past. Rather, it is one of the greatest Irish and British and indeed European achievements an enduring peace rooted in the Good Friday Agreement, which we have been striving at all times to protect and guarantee into the future, despite Brexit. All communities in Northern Ireland and the future generations we hope are, who hope to live, work and enjoy life in this unique part of these islands deserve the peace and prosperity that those guarantees must continue to deliver. These are fateful days and weeks in British politics. I remain convinced that there is a majority in the United Kingdom Parliament which will do all it can to avert a disastrous crash out Brexit for everyone. I'm also of the view that the deal obtained by Prime Minister May, which in relation to the now famous backstop, was significantly modified to address UK concerns and red lines. The European Council provided reassurance about the backstop in December, and we are ready to provide additional clarifications if that is helpful. However, we cannot reopen the withdrawal agreement text itself, which was the product of multiple compromises and highly detailed negotiations on a, across a wide range of areas over a two-year period. The time for wishful thinking is over. There is no alternative 585-page agreement waiting to be dusted off somewhere. And it is also wishful thinking to ignore the default outcome if nothing else is agreed. That default is a crash out. Surely now is the time in Westminster for everyone, in government and in opposition, to cast aside unrealistic options based on promises that simply cannot be delivered. If that doesn't happen quickly, in the absence of that realism, it is the hardliners who think no price is too high to pay for their version of Brexit, who will win out to everybody else's cost, most notably Ireland's cost. Brexit is less than three months away, and the final outcome is up in the air. Even a no-deal scenario is still an option, despite the serious damage that this would cause on both sides. There's too much at stake to take this lightly. We urge our British friends to act responsibly and unite behind the agreement that we have spent so much time and effort negotiating. I think it's important to say both for, for Irish and German media that the, the compromises that resulted in a withdrawal treaty being agreed between 27 EU governments and of course the UK government as well um, uh, this is an EU position not an Irish position uh, some of the issues of course impact on Ireland in a more direct way than other EU countries um, but it, it was a negotiation led by an EU negotiator, Michel Barnier, endorsed by an EU Council President and an EU Commission President. Um, so we have never seen any evidence to suggest uh, that there is somehow an Irish position that the EU is supporting reluctantly that may change towards the end of these negotiations. Quite the opposite, in fact that this is, these are, this is an EU-negotiated position. 
the, the border on the island of Ireland is an <coughs> EU border with the UK, as well as an Irish border with the, with the UK. Uh, and so uh, the compromises that have been achieved that can work for everybody, Britain and Ireland and the rest of the EU, uh, are ones that I don't think are going to change. Uh, and certainly we have felt no pressure to change them. And I think it's important to reinforce that message 